Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to Gooseberry Bridge Farm. Today I'm going to show you how we took this berry patch and turned it into a greenhouse. <laughs> We are breaking ground today in our second large greenhouse. This is our first one that we built in 2020. It's uh, 29 feet by about 12 and a half feet wide. And we are building another one right here. We've got it roped off right now to be the same dimensions and approximately the same height at the back. It'll be a little taller in the front because the ground slopes more on this hill, but that's okay. Um, so the first thing we're doing is we put T-posts in all four corners. We've measured a, the exact distance and put a T-post in each one and ran a rope with a level line. This will be the same as uh, that board right there, that level line. And that's what our hoop's going to sit on. So once uh, we start digging posts, we'll have to take this down. We have put a circle where we're going to dig each hole and I wrote off to the side exactly how tall this is. So this one is four feet. This one is six and a half feet tall. So we've got, I'm sorry, five and a half feet tall. So we have a foot and a half of drop from that corner to this corner. And then over here, we've got a it's five foot tall. So all in all, we've got a decent amount of drop, and it's going to be pretty tall down here, but again, we're, we're okay with that. I procured some 4x4s uh, four to use as posts. There are 14 of them. There are four in the corner, three down each side, and then uh, two in the front and two in the back in the middles where the doors will be. So this right here, there'll be two right here to frame in a door and there'll be two in the back to frame in a door as well. So it makes 14 total. I found a local gentleman who has a little sawmill and he lumbers or uh, uh, cuts and uh, mills this cedar. So it's a little rough in places, but it'll do well for what we're doing. You could also use pressure treated lumber that you buy at your favorite home improvement store or hardware store. However, since we're going to grow food in here and this is our vegetable garden right downhill from it, we didn't want to put that many chemicals in the ground that if we could help it. We are going to use concrete to set these, which is more chemical than we like, but um, having mercury, arsenic, and all the bad stuff that goes into pressure treated lumber, uh, we, we decided to go with natural cedar. Cedar has a lot of natural oil in it and is very resistant to rot and it holds up very well to the elements, much like pressure treated pine. So next stop is to take all these strings and the tipos down and start digging holes. We've got the four corner post in the ground and set. They have braces on them and concrete in the holes. So by tomorrow, they should be set up enough that we can tie strings to them and re, uh, reline where the top of the greenhouse base is going to be that the hoop will sit on and uh, we'll we'll do that probably tomorrow or the next day after the concrete's had a chance to settle We could actually do it tomorrow, but we have other plans. So it'll probably be day after tomorrow So we'll pick the filming up then Hi again, it's a cold and gloomy day today, but the Concrete posts we set up for the four corners have set up Switch the camera around You can see here We can give these a shake and they don't move so the concrete has set up I took off the supports that were holding the posts steady and the wobble in them is just the uh, uh, natural wobble of the posts. They're very secure in the ground 
and what, what I've done next after removing those supports is to run a string at ground level so I've got a straight line around the outside of each post that determine where the outside of the building is going to be and then it's 29 feet long from here to that post so what we're doing is dividing that into three equal sections of just over seven feet and then I've marked those with these uh, um, uh, what do you call them posts and we're going to take a can of spray paint and mark each one of these so we know where to put our next holes. And since that string is the outside wall, we're marking them just on the inside. And we're gonna do that all the way around. There will be three more on that side of the building. There'll be one in the middle of this side because it's shorter, it's only about 12 and a half feet. So we'll put one at just over six feet dead in the middle of those two. And then we'll put two in the front, even though it's only 12 feet also, we're going to put a door there. So I'm gonna put one on each side of the door. That way it is more secure and more stable with the door in place. And last thing for today, we've got the spots all painted on the ground where the next posts are going to go. See, there are nine more of them. And then I've raised the string up to about eye level, not anything specific, just about eye level. That way, when we drill the holes tomorrow in the ground, we'll set the po posts in place and they will lean against the string. And we'll use that to make sure that we have all the posts exactly in a straight line. And then we'll use more of these uh, little braces to stand them up. We'll set them in concrete and repeat this process. And then we'll have all of the posts in the ground for our greenhouse and be ready to start building the frame and then eventually the hoop over the top. We have got the front two supports and then the one back support in. We still have three, as you can see, one, two, three, left to do on each side. And then we'll have all of the posts in the ground for this, and then we can start framing it in and actually getting some work done. Um, this, These posts are where the front door is going to be. So we'll shim in the door once it's set up. And then the back one is really tall, and that's going to basically match the hoop of the uh, building. By my calculations, that would probably be just a couple of inches short, but we can always add more to it as needed. We've got all these little boards to hold these up, and I've had people ask what they were for. When you're setting these up before you pour the concrete in, you want to get them as immovable as possible and then pour the concrete around it for the concrete to set up. So you generally have them going at least all four directions. In this case, I did one to the front, one to the back, and then I did sideways ones connecting them to a post that was already set up in concrete. On the back one where it couldn't reach, you see I've got four of them, one going each direction. That way it can't really rotate or fall over front, back, or sideways. Tomorrow, once the concrete's set up, we'll be able to pull those off and these will be solid. We'll do these last six posts and then we'll start tying all these together with two by sixes that will actually make up the frame of the building kind of like you see on that one how we've got two by sixes around it and then we have windows in it as well uh, we've also found a couple of windows in our barn that we're going to repurpose their old house windows so on either side of the door there will be a sliding window up and down because in a greenhouse, airflow is key, and we want to be able to open it up when it gets really sunny and have air flowing from the front to the back. The pigs see me, and they think I'm going to feed them. So, I'm going to go say hi to the pigs. Hi, guys.
I don't have food for you. Welcome to day three of Greenhouse Build 2023. We have all of the posts in the ground. I did not get footage of doing this due to a technical malfunction, but we've dug the last six posts. They are stood up. They are firmed into the ground either with little legs or with braces to already established posts. Uh, we are currently laying out the concrete bags by each post and are about to set concrete. And then we will have all the posts set. Hi, welcome back. We're on day five, I think, of this adventure. It's kind of a cold, rainy day. Say hi, Jamie. Hi. Uh, and Steve's here with us, too. We've uh, missed a couple of days of filming, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you where we're at. We've got all the posts in the ground, and then we've got two by six header boards going across there and here to hold everything in place. That's what the cattle panels are gonna fit on or sit on. And then Steve is going through and framing out where the vent windows are going to go. He's gonna hand build those. Uh, they're two foot by three foot windows, which on our old greenhouse over here, we had much smaller ones. And we decided that uh, we need more ventilation, especially because given the size of this greenhouse being a lot taller, even though it's the same footprint, it's a lot taller, it's gonna need more ventilation. Uh, we're gonna go back into time-lapse mode and we're actually going to put the cattle panels on, the arches on these. So we'll let you watch that in fast forward. I thought we'd point out how we connected these panels to the framing. So what we used is plumber's hose strap. You can buy that in the plumbing aisle of your favorite home, home improvement store. Comes in a metal roll or a big roll and you just use a pair of tin snips to cut it off. We rotate or uh, roll it We come outside around the panel and then screw through two holes and we do that we put two on the outside of every panel and two on the inside or actually three on the inside that keeps it from pushing in or out so the thing is pretty well bonded to the frame uh, ideally it will keep it from um, having any warpage which this is also why we took the extra step of burying all these corner posts in concrete instead of just putting them in the dirt because we knew there was going to be a lot of outbound pressure on this sidewall. Uh, this sidewall right here in the middle is actually moved out almost two inches from where it was when we started and that's based solely on the pressure that these cattle panels are putting by, by bending out. We're gonna put a truss across the middle of it uh, to, to give a little more support, but it's just assumed that it's gonna push out a little bit, but it's not going to push over just because of the strength of the four by fours in concrete. Next step is we're gonna frame out the front, the front and the back. We're gonna, this is the north side. We're gonna completely box it in so It'll be insulated. It will not be plastic like our other greenhouse because there's no reason for it. Uh, no, no light comes in the north side, so it's pointless. Uh, we're just going to do it in a, like a plywood, whatever we can find at a decent price. And then the front is going to have doors and windows to offer maximum uh, sunlight and ventilation. And the back will have ventilation also. The main point here has been to make this area, this uh, surface flat. So we've had to build it out with two by fours and two by sixes so that the plywood will go flat. We're going to hold the plywood up 
and draw a line on it so that we know exactly where to cut it and it will it will be uh, lined up exactly with that. We're going to also line the edges with a foam insulator that is sold at Home Depot. It's just a uh, pipe insulator and you'll see us putting that up on the edges to protect the plastic from the sharp edges of the cattle panel. These are two foot by three foot holes that have been framed out for windows or vents. And we're going to put screen over the vents and then open them up, make it so that they open up to let air flow through and not let animals in when they're open. We are wrapping up construction on the greenhouse. We've got the plastic all on. The windows are almost framed out. We've got vents on the back and the back is completely closed in and the front has the door on it. We'll go take a look at that. These are gonna be window vents here. Uh, we'll cut these out. And Steve is making custom sized uh, windows that will fit inside those holes and in the front still got a little more framing to do mainly covering but everything is almost done we've got a few more vents to put in here we've got a screen door mounted and we'll go look inside uh, today we're going to put in more windows vents and i'm going to lay the rest of the weed fabric down in here to prohibit weed growth within the within the greenhouse it's about 40 degrees outside and it is a balmy 70 in here i'd say maybe 65 or 70 even with a lot of these windows open uh, we're really going to need to get these vents on to make it usable in here because that's key on a sunny day to keeping airflow going but we are really close to calling it done and ready to hold plants. This is our last update for the greenhouse. We are officially done. I'm gonna show you a few of the windows and other items that we've finished up since the last update. We've got the vents in the back complete. Sorry about the sun. These back ones open up all the way. And on every one of these vents, it's hard to see, but we've got quarter inch uh, screen on them, hardware cloth. We could have done half inch, but uh, found the quarter inch for about the same price. So we ended up getting that. So everywhere we have a vent that is open, we have that for the purpose of keeping animals out. Like for us, it, that's cats, but squirrels or anything else would go in and eat baby plants. Uh, it's it's key to have these windows or vents as they are um, covered with something like that. We also put on these little rain blocks. Uh, Steve Steve put these together uh, to keep the water from running right off the roof and into the windows. So every one of these window vents has a little hat, which is pretty. Pretty ingenious, I thought. And going around the other side, we've got vents here as well. Every vent has uh, a string. We use baleen twine for this and uh, eye hooks. So that way, when you close these, you can uh, latch them with this and then the eye hooks will allow them to open up just so, but not uh, not flap open or swing all the way down and hurt the plastic. Switching my camera around because I'm a little awkward going frontwards or with the front facing camera. 
The uh, vents up here are a lot the same way. We've got strings to help uh, pull them open because they're so high above the door. And then we've got these old reclaimed windows that we found in our barn. They're out of a house. We installed them upside down so that we could drop the window to open it rather than raising it. Uh, they're a little stiff, but I think that's a good thing. As you can see, we've already got plants in here since my last video update. We needed the space pretty badly. Um, it's working great. We've got the hardware cloth. Here's a closer look at it. This actually shows up better than it did outside. And here's a look at those uh, vents in the front from inside with all the little strings that are in place to close them, latch them, open them, etc. The last little feature that uh, we put in here that I want to show you is we took a bunch of old scrap lumber. Uh, some of it is fence pickets, as you can see right there, and some are actual chunks of two by six. These are all leftover pieces of scrap lumber, and Steve cut these down to shape, pounded them down into the ground over the weed fabric and screwed them into the frame. That helps keep uh, critters like moles from digging in, and it also helps redirect uh, water runoff. We had a massive flooding rain the other night. We had a, almost six inches of rain in about 12 hours. And even though this building is on a pretty dramatic slope, we had very little water inside, just what kind of soaked up from the ground. We didn't have any water running from corner to corner, which was a concern. And I think a lot of it is due to these little uh, picket dam dams that uh, we put in place. <clears throat> the water came in, hit those, and then just kept going. That's the end of this video. I hope you found this enlightening or motivating or something. We don't really have plans, but we did everything based on just kind of our needs and uh, framed it in from there. The biggest things to know when you're doing this is to you know, keep things level, you use a level and just make sure you add braces to make things as sturdy as possible. But, you know, a lot of people ask us for plans for how we've built these and we don't really have plans because we just kind of wing it as we go. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.